Hey, this is JP from John Paul Music UK, and in this video, we're going to show you how you can record vocals and audio into GarageBand on iOS. How you doing guys? Welcome to the channel. If you've never been here before, my channel is all about music tech and looping. Please give this video a thumbs up as it really does help the channel grow, and please consider subscribing to the channel as well. So with GarageBand, there's a couple of different ways we can actually get audio into GarageBand by using microphones. And I'm gonna show you those different ways today. There are three main ways we can record audio using a microphone. We can either use the internal microphone of the device, whether you're using an iPhone or an iPad, we can use the microphone from a pair of headphones, or we can use an audio interface. In every instance, I would really recommend that you use headphones. So the first one is the internal microphone. Now the iPhones, the iPads, and even the iPod Touches have got more than one microphone on the device, and it's the fastest way of getting audio into GarageBand. However, it does get a lower quality of recording and picks up a lot of noise. But the advantage is that you don't have to have any other piece of equipment with you other than the iPhone, the iPad, or the iPod Touch. Now just like any other microphone, it's a great idea to point that device at what you're recording, and a good idea to use something like a pop shield, and you can place that over the microphone if you wanted to. The quality of the internal microphone is getting better all the time, but it's nowhere in comparison to somewhere like a studio microphone or even a handheld microphone. But the advantage of recording with the internal one is if you just want to get a guide track down or a skeleton track recording, it's nothing extra needed. The next way to record audio into GarageBand is using the microphone from a pair of headphones. Using a headphone microphone like the ones you get free with your iPhone means you can direct the actual pickup of the sound. This means it's a lot more focused than just using the device's built-in microphone. Also, it's really minimal and one cable. The other thing as well, you've got a bit of distance between the device and the microphone itself. But again, the downside is that the microphone inside the cable is omnidirectional and it, obviously the quality isn't as good as using a condenser mic or a handheld mic. popular option is to use an external microphone plugged in with some kind of audio interface. If you want a recording that's high-end and you want to release that piece of music, then an audio interface is the way to go. There are many audio interfaces on the market today which have USB, some now have USB-C, and some also go directly into Lightning for the iPhone and the iPod. Now I've used quite a couple of audio interfaces before and you just need one piece of tech to connect that audio interface to an iPad or an iPhone or an iPod Touch. Also now on the market there are some microphones that plug in directly into Lightning and also directly into USB-C. But if you're going to use a traditional microphone or a condenser microphone then you're going to need some kind of audio interface to plug that in so then you can plug that into your device. For example, I have got this. This is the Focusrite 2i2. This is its second generation, and it's USB out. Now what I need is an adapter that goes from USB to USB-C for this iPad, or for USB to Lightning for the iPhone. And it's the camera connection kit. This Lightning to USB dongle will not only transfer photos, but you can actually use it for anything USB. For example, I can plug my keyboard into it. I can also plug an audio interface into it. It has come in the USB 2 version and the USB 3 version. The USB 3 version also has a lightning port so you can power as well. Many microphones might need external power, even the audio interface needs external power. So what you can do is you can plug in the USB and the lightning at the same time and that way that will power both the device to keep it charged and also power the unit. I use a mixture of things. I have an Alesis IO hub which is actually just sitting over there in the corner. You might not be able to see that. And then also you've got my main one, which is the Focusrite Scarlett 2i2. The main reason I use Focusrite for recording, they have great preamps inside. Also, you can see there, there's two plugs in. So I've got a microphone plugged in. In fact, let me show you that. There it is. So this microphone is my SM58. It's plugged into here and I can adjust the volume accordingly. I've got another audio input that I can do with either jack or XLR. We've got a monitor there, which would be the jacks on the back here, which are literally just left and right and go out to my monitors. And then also I've got a headphone output as well. In 2019, Apple released the iPad Pro third generation, and that's what I predominantly use as well as the iPhone. But with that, of course, we need a dongle. Uh, Apple have their own dongle 
dongle, which gives you USB-C and also USB, uh, but also I use a hyperdrive. Hyperdrive also has normal USB as well as a couple of advantages. The one thing I do like about the dongle system is when you plug them in to power, it will power both the device and also the audio interface as well. Focusrite have now released a USB-C version of their Scarlett range. This is the 2i2, and with that, you wouldn't need the dongle. You could just plug it straight into the iPad Pro. Okay, so now we've explained the tech, let's get into GarageBand and show you how we actually record audio. So I'm gonna create a new song, and then we're gonna to go to Tracks, and I'm just gonna swipe across. What we're gonna to do today is we're gonna use Audio Recorder. So when we use Audio Recorder, we can either say Voice or Instrument at the bottom there. I'm just gonna tap in the middle, and it's gonna load this up. I've just brought the microphone in here so you can see what's happening. What you can see is there is a big bar at the bottom here, and this is the microphone bit, and it's split into two sections. You've got the fun section, and you've got the studio section. It says tap the red button to start recording using the accessory connected to your device. Now, before we even get going on this, if you're just using the device with nothing connected, you will see your volume going up and down here on the in section, and then you should see the out but the out will be blank. And then what you have to do is you have to turn monitoring on. Let me just turn it off. So I've turned it off at the moment and you've got the, me, you can just hear me at the moment. But when I turn monitoring on, if you haven't got anything connected and you're just using the microphone of the device and you haven't got headphones connected at all, it won't let you turn monitoring on because it knows it's gonna get feedback. So when we turn monitoring on, then we know we can actually hear it back. Now, on the left-hand side, at the bottom there, you'll see on mine, it says channel one, and that's because we've got the audio interface plugged in. So I can actually tap on that, and I can dictate which audio source I'm gonna be bringing in. I can either do input one, input two, or stereo. And this also means that I can actually use two things at the same time. I can record two channels at the same time if I want to. I can either record them stereo, or if I'm gonna record the microphone and then get the guitar on channel two, I can set up another channel where I've got that input as well and we can record that simultaneously. Now to record simultaneously what you do have to do is you have to go into the advanced settings and tell GarageBand to do multi-track recording. So we go into settings and then we just go to advanced and there you can see multi-track recording and we can switch that on. When you switch on multi-track recording, you'll also notice at the top left where it says audio recorder, we've now got a little red dot and we've got an orange one and the orange one is monitoring. And what I can do is I can now set up another one. So if I set up for my guitar, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go on the first one, tell that that's channel one. And then the second one, I'm gonna actually tell it that's channel two. So now I can tap on the top here and I can say both record at the same time. Obviously I've got no guitar plugged in right now, but then if I then hit record, you'll see at the very, very top there, it's now got number two in the record, which means it's recording two tracks at the same time. This is really nice because of course it separates it out. Imagine you're doing this for two microphones, you're doing a podcast, or you're doing it with, as I say, a microphone and a guitar. I can also change the settings for each channel. So right now we're on the guitar one, so I'm gonna change that, so I'm gonna have that as Dreamy Chorus, and that's fine. Go back to the microphone, of course, you can hear that right now, and I can change that over. Now the fun section's quite nice, it's got a little bit of fun stuff, you can... Change into a squirrel. Or change into a monster. Or change into a robot. But if we go over to the studio side, then what you've also got is you've got clean, and then we can actually go into vocals, and we've got things like lead vocals, radio ready, punchy presence, and then let's just go into narrator, and that'll change the way I sound when we're talking, if we're going into, say, podcasting, or if I'm gonna sing something, obviously we can go into lead vocals, and that will give me a little bit of a vocal haul. There is some compression there, there's pitch control, a little bit of drive. Again, we can go into there for the acoustic guitar, and you can see the tones and presence and compressor, so they're all different compared to the vocals. Obviously, with an audio interface, what you need to make sure is you're not clipping the audio. Uh, so we can see that in a couple of different ways. First of all, here, uh, this is another reason why I do like the focus, right? It gives you a clear indication of whether you're clipping it or not, and we can turn that up a little bit and then you should get a little green halo and then it can go as amber and then red if you're clipping it. And then you can also see it directly on GarageBand. So we can see on GarageBand here, we can see the audio going in and you can also see the input and the output. And then all I need to do is hit record 
and then we can record both the guitar and the vocals at the same time. Or of course, if you just want to record one, we can just turn off the recording of the guitar while we just record the vocals. So I hope that gives you a little bit of an insight in how to record vocals into GarageBand, uh, whether it be vocals or you're recording audio like a guitar or a synthesizer as well. And I, we're going to do a couple of more videos on GarageBand for 2019 and leading into 2020 as well. I'm going to show you a couple of those scenarios I said in earlier videos. If you've not seen the episode one, I'll put a link in the description and also in the cards now. And then also there's episode two and then there's this episode. I'm going to carry on with GarageBand and show you more in-depth things right through to automation and a couple of other bits with EQ as well. I just want to give a quick shout out to everyone who subscribed so far. Thank you so much. I'm really happy that you're liking the channel. And obviously if you've got any comments around recording audio with GarageBand, please leave them in the comment section below. I just also want to let everyone know that I have now set up a Patreon page where if you want to contribute to the channel, you can do. There's some nice little tiers in there. Have a look at the link below now and also I'll put that link in the description. For the regular viewers, yes we've changed the look. This is my studio at home and this is the computer as well. Uh, so we've moved things around a little bit and I've also made a playlist about GarageBand. So all the GarageBand ones that I've done, there's a playlist there for you to actually watch and just dive into and play and replay if you need that advice. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you on the next one.